Hi, this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Beat Slicer effect in Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2. When you turn the Beat Slicer on, it's going to sample two bars of audio. It's then going to break up the two bars of audio into tiny little pieces and then shuffle them around. Now let's take a quick listen to the Beat Slicer effect so you can get a feel for it before we look at the controls. There you could hear just how the Beat Slicer works by chopping up the audio in the track. So now let's talk about the different controls. Looking over at the knobs, we've got knob number one, which is labeled buzz. Increasing the buzz knob from left to right will introduce a beat roll effect that repeats one beat out of the current sample of audio. And the more that you turn it to the right, the faster the rate of repetition will occur. Let's take a quick listen to the buzz knob in different positions. So again, as you turn it from left to right, you're going to be increasing the beat roll repetition rate. And when you have it all the way to the right, you're going to really hear that buzzing sound of that repeated beat. So knob number two is the style knob. And this will select one of five groups of patterns that you will be choosing from with the knob to the right, knob number three. So as you can see, as I turn it, you'll see that it says S3, S2, S1, S4, and S5. And depending on which S setting you have will be the group of patterns that you have to choose from. And that again brings us to knob three, which is labeled PAT, short for pattern. This knob lets you choose the pattern of the chunks of audio. What's important to note about that is that there are actually five patterns in each style group. So if we have it all the way to the left, the pattern knob will show one. And as we turn it to the right, you'll see it goes to two, three, four, and finally five. So if there are five patterns in each style group, how come there are only 20 different patterns to choose from? That's because if you have the knob turned all the way to the right, set to P1, you're actually going to just hear the sampled audio without any shuffling. And that is true no matter what style group you're using. So you can change the style knob all day long and as long as it is set to pattern one, you're only going to hear that loop of audio. So those are the knobs. Now let's go ahead and talk about the buttons. Button number one, of course, is the reset button. This is the same on all of the effects in Tractor Pro 2. Next up, we've got button two, which is labeled go. When you have this enabled, the beat slicer effect is going to sample and manipulate the audio at the same time. It's also important to note that when you have the go button turned on, you are going to be restricting the size of the loop from two bars to one bar. Finally, we get to button number three, which says two bar. When you turn the two bar button on, you're going to be using all of the sampled audio as opposed to just one bar. This can be handy if you're using a track that maybe has a lot of vocals in it and you wanna chop up the vocals, but one bar just isn't enough. Let's take a listen to the difference between using just one bar and using two bars. So again, that was using two bars of sampled audio as opposed to just one. Now that we've gone over the different controls of the effect, let's talk about using it in your DJ mixes. When you first start using this effect, you're gonna wanna make sure that you just focus on turning it on and off. So let's talk about the different settings that you will want to use when you first start using this. You're gonna wanna make sure that the dry wet knob is at 100% or turned all the way to the right.
you're going to want to make sure that you start with the effect off and turn the effect on at the appropriate time. I like to set my buzz knob at around 12 o'clock or the center knob position. As I mentioned before, I like to have my style knob set to S4 or style 4 and then the pattern set to P2 or pattern 2. I'm going to be keeping the go knob off and I'm not going to be using all two bars of a loop. When I'm ready to use the effect, I'm going to turn it on and then turn it off after one bar or four beats of audio. That'll give me the entirety of the sampled audio, but also won't be too long that the effect will become distracting. So let's take one more listen to the effect and this time I'm going to count out the beats as I turn the effect on and off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the beat slicer effect in Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2. If you like this video and want to learn more about Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2, check out our other videos at youtube.com slash thedjpodcast or at thedjpodcast.com.